Hello. Oh, hey, Liam. Well, how are you, Liam? Good to see you. See you. Oh, hi, Theo. So if you do come on, please just type a hi in the live chat so I know you're here. So far, Liam and Theo have said hi. And I know we have more because it says five, seven viewers now. Hi, Cassidy. Hi, Isaiah. Oh, I'm good. We're all good here having fun doing our live stream, Liam. Good question. Thank you. One, two, three, four. We're supposed to be eight. Hey, Matthias. We're at five. That's pretty good. Hi, Errol. <laughs> uh, oh, hi, Felix, and hi, Errol. You guys are an hour early, but you can hang out with eighth grade, too. And Isaiah, as, as usual, I would recommend hmm, maybe writing some things down could be helpful, uh, whether it's online or, or in person. Hi, Lauren. Okay, so I think everybody's here. Oh, there's Feldmarsh. Nice. Good to see you. Except for Lillian, I think. Is that correct? Wait. Um, and Inessa, am I doing this right? Hang on. Theo's here. Liam's here. I, uh, Feldmarsh is here. Inessa, I think is not here. And then, um, Matthias is here. Um, Cassidy's here. Lauren is here and Isaiah is here. Okay, good. Well, we're close enough. It's 9.02. So, um, hi. I uh, hope everybody's doing okay. Um, glad to see you guys. Even though you can only see me, I can't see you. But I do see your comments. And um, so, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all sticking to the rules in terms of self-isolating and um, not uh, meeting people and talking to people and all those things. And I also hope everybody at home is healthy. Um, Eve checked in. I, is that Lillian by any chance? I'm not sure. So um, anyway, so Lillian and Anessa are still not here. Anywho, um, so I hope you're all doing well. I hope your family's well. I hope you're healthy. Uh, either way, uh, if you aren't healthy, I hope you're getting healthy soon. I know there's other, oh, hi, good, uh, other uh, coughs uh, going around. It's not just um, corona, as you know, but other other diseases. And I know several people got sick on the ski trip, which um, turned out most likely not being corona, but there's other stuff going around like the flu and colds and those things. Anywho, uh, I'm sorry, Lillian. God bless you. Uh, get better soon. Uh, are you, uh, do you, do you have, uh, uh, hello. It's also Liam. Okay. All right. So Liam has two, what? Now I'm confused. Okay. All right. Anyway, so I hope you get better soon. And uh, uh, as you've noticed, we've been already one week in this vacation. Wrong. It's not a vacation. I think I'm going to give you just a short speech about the situation. I think you're already kind of in that mindset by now because we're far enough along that you've realized that 
This is very different from a vacation, especially because you are officially still in school. So I, I want to put in your mind that, um, you know, uh, you have to figure out how to make this work for you in terms of continuing to learn. Um, I know it's not always obvious to everybody that school um, helps you become a better person and know more things and can do more things and those kind of things, um, especially when you have to go um, uh, yes, just a minute. I'm just giving you a little speech, then we can do all that. So uh, this is not a vacation. You're in school. You have to figure out how to make this work. And I think it'll work both ways. It'll work, first of all, to make you better at everything, physics, German, French, English, uh, chemistry, history, etc. cetera. Um, but also it'll actually help you give structure to your day because um, it's going to get tough. We've, we're already one week into this thing, and we've got at least two more weeks. And um, I think we're all getting a feeling that it's going to take even longer than that. And maybe after spring break, like we're hoping, like this point, I think we're hoping to be back in school April 20th. But uh, realistically, maybe that's not going to happen. And if that's not going to happen, if we have several more weeks of this, maybe even till the summer, then we need to figure out, you need to figure out, how this is gonna work, how you're gonna get better at the things, how you're gonna learn the skills you would have learned um, in order to be able to, to not just waste this time, okay? So that's really important and also give you structure for your day. Um, in terms of where we're going, I am uh, planning on doing occasional live streams and I'm uh, willing to calibrate that a little bit according to what works well for you, meaning um, we'll figure out, um, uh, whether that's a really good thing, whether it's okay, or whether it's a bad thing. Either way, I'll probably do a few live streams, but if you guys want to do more, I'm certainly open to that, and then uh, we can figure out what is the best procedure. Uh, I've already assigned for you some assignments uh, out of the book. I've also um, prepared, uh, I haven't sent it out yet, um, a simulation lab that I'm going to send out where you uh, do a lab uh, through a on not online, you actually download it and you run it on your computer, uh, a simulation uh, about circuits. And I think it's really good and I think you'll enjoy it. And, and that'll be coming up soon. And um, uh, those are a situation right now. Now, Feldmarsh uh, wanted to ask a question about one of these assignments. Uh, happy to answer it now. And or I was also thinking of doing a little discussion about how circuits work because we're here to learn physics, obviously. So that's my next step. But um, Feldmarsh, you want to ask your question first? Or questions, it says questions. Hi, Nessa. Go ahead. Okay, Feldmarsh, what do you want to know about? Just so page 183, okay? There is an equation that says to get charge is current times time. Good. Yep. So let me just talk about that for a second. And um Remind me, before you, um, okay, Isaiah, I did receive your assignments and I did respond that you should upload it on Google Classroom. Good. So it gives an example under which it says current is two and the time is three, then it's three coulombs. Yeah, that's wrong. It should be six. Coulombs. Isaac, Feldmarsh. Yes, it's six coulombs. Three times two is six. Okay, so you're correct. It should be six. Um, yes, it is an error in the book, Feldmarsh. So everybody else, uh, page 183, if you didn't notice in the middle, 
there's a mistake that Feldmarsh saw, um, and it should be six coulombs is what it should say, almost right in the middle, right above current direction. Okay, so um, let me give you just a little uh, talk about circuits. Um, I think before we, oh good, um, right before you guys left on ski trip, I believe we talked briefly a resort analogy for a circuit. Ski resort analogy for a circuit, yes? Or no? You guys still there? Uh-oh. Yes, sure. We did talk about that, good. Excellent. Okay, so just a quick reminder as to how we thought about a circuit. So, okay, ski lift and skiing down. That's correct. So, um, what we said was that's showing up. Okay, good. We said that a ski slope downhill and a and a and a ski lift are a good analogy for a resistor or a light bulb over here and a power source over here, a voltage source that provides delta V for the current to flow. And just kind of reviewing to remind you guys what the different things were. So the delta V is the voltage, also known as the potential difference, same thing. So for example, if this was a nine volt battery, it will be nine volts. And in our analogy, the nine volts is the height of this mountain. And if you go skiing, I'm sure you had the same thing in uh, Austria, that the Höhenmeter, the height difference, was really important for you to figure out whether a run was good, okay? So it was 500 meters, that's cool, 200 meters, not so cool, whatever. So this kind of is the equivalent of delta V, and if you want to have somebody measure that height difference, they'd have to be an awfully large person with a gigantic ruler, and this is kind of this person here, and our purpose is, uh, for our purposes, this is how what a voltmeter is. A voltmeter is a height measuring device that you bring next to your circuit and you measure how high of a difference between the top and the bottom there is, okay? Now, uh, the skiers that are moving through your circuit, well, those are the charges that are moving through here. So um, skiers, that's the ch uh, charges. And that means, of course, that skiers per time, well, that's the current. So at... Um, the ski resort, they would count how many skiers go into the lift. Generally, they do this down here. So down here, what they would do is they have kind of a, a gate that you have to go through. Um, gate turnstile 
or something like that. And that, in our analogy, is the ammeter, the ammeter that measures how much current flows. Okay? The ammeter is the current that flows, and that would be a gate or turnstile, or it could also be a minimum wage person that is um, literally using a counter, like a clicker. That's what they used to do. They have a clicker person just counting, and then every half hour, they'd use a walkie-talk, and uh, they communicate that then, and then they can adjust how many slopes are open. Okay, that's the ammeter. And again, for the ammeter, a minimum wage person. Exactly, Anessa, correct. So for the ammeter to, to work, for the turnstile to work, you actually have to physically go through it. So the current goes through the ammeter, just like the skiers go through the turnstile or the uh, little uh, door closing system where you might be using your uh, barcoded lift pass, dependent on how a sophisticated of a, of a ski uh, operation it is. Again, ammeters or that gate turnstile, the current, the skiers go through it because they're being counted as they move along. The voltmeter, on the other hand, comes to the side of the measurement of the hill and measures the height difference between these two points. If we take that idea and we transfer it over to a actual circuit diagram, the circuit diagram would look like this. And here we're using the same symbols we had used up here, but we're just being a little bit clearer um, about uh, and a little more technical. And I'm going to do the following. I'm going to have an ammeter here. A1, and I have my resistor over here, and I have A2 here. And I'm gonna do, first of all, a thing where I say, okay, well, delta V over here is nine volt, and the resistance, we didn't put that on here, let's choose that to be um, um, one, six ohms, just for fun, okay, six ohms, okay? That's the resistance of the circuit. Now, if we look at this, we introduced Ohm's law, yes or no? Ohm's law has been introduced? Okay. So Ohm's law No, okay. Thank you. Thanks Lauren. So we have a certain amount of current flowing in our circuit and current for no particular reason is labeled I. Current is labeled I. Voltage difference is delta V. Let's actually get a colored maybe here. Pencil, a uh, pen. So here, voltage, current, and resistance. Okay, good. So I'm going to get an Idiotendreieck in just a second. But before we go there, um, we'll just think about this for, for a second. In our circuit, um, the energy source is delta V. It's providing the energy by lifting the skiers up to the top so they can then ski down. So if we had more voltage difference, more potential difference here, would we get more current or a less current? More voltage difference, more potential difference creates more current or less current. What do you guys think? Will that help the current flow or will it impede the current from flowing when we have more battery pushing current through our circuit? More current would be make sense. So uh, the current therefore would increase if the voltage increases, good. 
How about resistance? How does resistance affect this? If we have more resistance here, say with 12 ohms or 50 ohms, would that give you more current or less current? More resistance means more current or less current. Less, absolutely, good job. So we represent that in an equation that I is therefore delta V divided by R, okay? That's Ohm's law. The amount of current is equal to the potential difference divided by the resistance, okay? And we can make that into an Idiotendreieck over here Oh, that's a little tight, sorry. That's better. Okay, that delta V, I'm writing like this, I times R. So that's our idiotent height that goes with Ohm's law. I equals delta V over R is a good way of thinking about this. Um, uh, kind of, kind of. It, it, the, uh, uh, the resistance tells you how many volts you need to push one ampere through this resistor. So if we have six ohms, what that means is you need, you need six volts to get one ampere to go through that resistor. So an ohm can also be thought of as a volt per ampere. So that's really a good way of thinking about it because it tells you how difficult that thing is to get through. Okay, that's the basic idea. Ah, okay, good, good. So uh, coming back to our basic circuit here, we have Ohm's law now, we have a six ohm resistor and we have a nine volt potential difference. Those two pieces of information we can find to, to find out how much current flows in our circuit. So we've got two ammeters set up, one before, over here before the resistor and one afterwards here. Now, how much, yes, the amount of resistance affects how many amperes flow. So current is voltage difference, the potential difference divided by resistance. So based on those two numbers, nine volts and six ohms, how many amperes how many amperes flow? Okay. All righty. So we have delta V divided by R kind of getting to the bottom of my screen here. So um, I'm actually gonna scooch this over because I'm gonna run out of space. So delta V over R, oh, it's pretty messy there with the hand. So, okay, I, uh, okay. So that would be nine volts, the potential difference. Uh, um, sorry, six ohms is the uh, resistance. And nine divided by six would be 1.5 amps. So we have 1.5 amperes flowing in our circuit. Okay? Now, uh, that's correct. Uh, I have a follow-up question for you. We've got two ammeters set up here, and um, are they are they both measuring 1.5 amps, or is one me measuring more or less? So it, this is the amount we've calculated. Is that a? Is this the current here? Is that the current here? Is it the same, or is it different?
So I think Liam is saying that this one up here is measuring more. You said A, but I think you mean this, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Excellent. We have some disagreement. This is really good that we have our analogy. All right. Nesta says the same. So we have some disagreement. Um, that's good. So let's think back to our original analogy. Now, remember, this is down here is our ammeter at the bottom of the hill, our counter at the bottom of the hill. That would be A2. Now, let's say for a minute that I was a very, very particular ski resort owner. And I was like, I'm going to also install one of these things at the top that measures the same thing. So this seems a little silly, and you'll realize that in a minute. But let's say you get to the bottom of the ski, uh, ski lift and you go through, we go through a turnstile or through one of those closey thingies that you go through and it counts you. And, and then you get on the ski lift, you get off the ski lift, and some moron installed another one of these at the top. And you're like, we were just counted down here. Why do we have to be counted again up here? And as I, uh, as Feldmarch says, well, our ski lift will not, um, you know, change the number of skiers. It just transports skiers. So this current down here should be the same as the current up here. Okay. It won't change. And that's why we really only have to measure it once. And if I set this up like this, I'm just setting it up like this to make sure you get that. So uh, one other way of saying this is the circuit here that's moving charge around in a circle, in a circuit, it, it doesn't create, doesn't create, and it doesn't destroy charge. Okay, so the resistor does not affect the current. What the resistor does, and what I mean by that is remember, current is how much charge flows per time. How many coulombs are flowing per second? How many skiers are traveling in your ski resort per hour, per 15 minutes? The resistor indeed, <clears throat> consumes energy, the lift has lifted you up, and then you can use that energy to ski down. But it doesn't change how many skiers there are, but the skiers lose their energy in the skiing down the slope process. Okay, so there's no consumption of charge and no creation of charge in a circuit in the same way that a ski resort does not change the number of skiers. Hopefully there's no black hole that like consumes skiers and suddenly they're gone and vice versa. There's not like a magical lift where 10 people get on the lift at the bottom and then at the top of the lift, 20 get out. It's like, whoa, that's crazy. Okay, so circuits do not consume or create charge. Oh, good point, Liam. Yeah, so yes, the analogy does break down at some point and maybe somebody decides to actually jump the turnstile and those kind of things. So for circuits, that doesn't work. But and yes, the analogy at some point does break down. Oh, thanks, Feldmarsh. So. Okay, so that was my introduction to circuits. Uh, what I will do, they, they, hopefully at the end we all go home, that's, that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this video for you, okay? Now, oh, or the ski resort shuts down like for you guys, that's true. Um, so I will post this video on uh, YouTube so you can, um, Good, thank you, Theo. I'm gonna take it as a compliment. Um, so we're going to post this video and you can look at it later. I will also post for you the 
activity that will require you. I'm just going to say two words about that. Um, it's going to require Java, which is um, a plugin program, basically, that allows you to play animations. And don't yell at me if you're like a hacker king, whether that's exactly right. Anyway, so Java is necessary to play this. You're going to have to install it on your on your computer to do this. And when we're going to do kind of an online, no, it's not online. You download, it's free. You download the application. Uh, it's small. It doesn't take up a lot of space. But you do need a PC or Macintosh, some kind of laptop. And then you'll be able to, to do the lab. And I'm going to assign that soon. But I'm going to give you, if you have Minecraft, you have Java. OK, cool. Thanks, Feldmarsh. Good. So um, we will uh, give you that. And then you can um, work on that. I'm going to give you some time. I think you'll enjoy it. I think it's a fun software program. And it's free. And uh, it will allow you to build some circuits in the simulation and measure things with voltmeters, ammeters, and so on. I will also communicate you with you regarding uh, doing this again um, in terms of how often we will meet. I want to meet at least once a week. And if you guys were interested in meeting more, I would be open to that. But for now, let's plan on doing once a week to meet in, uh, in a live stream and otherwise communicating via um, Google Classroom. Reminder, everything should be uploaded on Google Classroom. and. Um, uh, and then also my email obviously works as well. Okay? All righty. Once a week sounds good. Okay? Good. We can give me feedback on that. And if you're like, you know, hey, I need more, let me know. Or once a week is good. That's cool too. Um, but let's stay in touch. Stay healthy. Everybody stay inside unless you have to go outside. You know it's verboten to go outside anyway right now. Um, unless you're uh, going shopping or something like that. Good. Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate it. Okay, so uh, stay well. Uh, hang in there. We can do this together and even learn some physics. Uh, all righty then. Can we clean? Uh, yes, please keep your workstation clean um, and, and, and also wash your hands. Yes, you can email me as well and, uh, and uh, contact over Google Classroom. Okay, we're at 932, so the bell would ring in five minutes if we were at school. But um, I'll finish uh, the conversation here, and I'm going to wave to you guys, and then I'm going to end the stream and upload it. So let's plan for now seeing you again next Monday, same time. Or maybe our, our other, other class time is Thursday, right? Anyway, we'll figure it out. All right. Okay. See you guys.